looks like my pathetic attempt to make it a London skyline. This is London with the skyscrapers. No, this is uh, a reminiscence of my childhood. We had a wonderful trick that we played ourselves at Christmas time to entertain. What you did was you made a piece of paper like this, and you lit the top. Hold your breath. What happens? Wow, up she blows. And the ash almost went to the ceiling. Tiny little bit of ash. It was an indoor firework kit, and this was a paper fire balloon. I loved it. So I thought later on, much later on, I thought I'd have a go at this myself, using what I looked like tissue paper, folded in three ways into a little triangle, and light it and see what happens. Well, here's one I've made up. We'll light it and see if we can make it take off. It's only tissue paper. And, oh, what a disappointment. Why didn't it work? So I started asking amongst my friends, do you remember when this little fire balloon was in indoor fireworks at home, etc.? And I said, oh yes, well, it'll work with amaretti paper, a kind of little macaroon you can get in restaurants when they serve it with a coffee. And the paper they use works like this. Well, I went to the restaurants, found the amaretti paper, this is a piece, and set fire to it, not at the restaurant, but at home. Aha! Uh -huh. Up she blows, it worked. Nice bit of ash, too. So why didn't the other one work? And Besides which, I didn't want amaretti paper, it's already printed, I want to put something else on it. So I went to a specialist paper manufacturer who said, ah, oh, you want paper which has got no clay and no ash, no chalk, even though it's in micrograms. It, they, they don't burn and the ash, it's got that tiny bit of extra weight and won't work. You want fibre only paper. So I went to a paper specialist in London. They said, yes, we use that type of paper. It's usually made in Japan and it's used for restoring Special manuscripts. This is some of the paper. Quite expensive, incidentally. Tissue paper would cost about a tenth of a penny in this sheet. I think this cost me about 10p. But would it work? Well, I tried it out. I made some, just for a bit of fun, I made a thing called the levitation puzzle, suggesting that for puzzlers, you've got to make this piece of paper levitate in the air, but without touching it in any way. What I was going to do, of course, is set fire to it. I even had to go out making some Christmas cards. This is all a little obscured now, but it said Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, inviting my friends to set fire to it on the twelfth night. But the idea was to actually enjoy this in another way other than just from an amaretti paper. So let's go with this paper that I've constructed myself. I've printed it with, with the special printer. I don't think the extra weight of the ink adds anything to the weight of the paper itself. We'll see if I can get it to levitate. Oops. Shh. Ooh. There she blows, and it worked. I found my own fire balloon. Wonderful. Catch the ash. And the party's over. Well, what a lot of fun that is. All sorts of things you can do with this. I know you have a Chinese magic mystery paper on all sorts of silly ideas, but the basic game is to set fire to the thing and let it go up in the air. Be a little bit more careful if you're in restaurants where there's downdrafts from air conditioning, sometimes at home as well, any drafts at all, even talking over it won't work. You've got a very, very small column of air which rises up from the paper fire balloon and it's as if it's climbing up a ladder, it's climbing up the column of air as it lifts up in the air. And you have to remember that when you're performing with it. Nice lesson for children, for physics at school too. Paper fire balloons, they're a lot of fun.